to invite you to the sixth uh, Danish Global Culture Talks. And uh, today we are going to debate, did the pandemic kill our communities? And uh, to uh, debate that, we have uh, Christian Ries, who's been uh, our partner in crime for, uh, for the last uh, five, six talks. And uh, Christian, he's uh, a musician in uh, the Danish band Nephew. He's also the founder of Nordic LA. And he does a lot of other things. Uh, so a cultural entrepreneur as well. And then we have uh, Harley Dubois. And uh, Harley, you are the, one of the founders of the really legendary and famed uh, Burning Man project. Uh, and uh, the Black Rock City, uh, what do you call it, foundation. And, um, and then we have Jeppe, who is standing here in the picture. And uh, welcome to you, Jeppe. You are a Danish uh, visual artist and you are based in, uh, in Berlin. Yeah, and thank you. We are going to start with a tour at your studio. Yeah. So Jeppe, Give us the tour. Yeah, give us the tour. Thank you very much, Les, and, and welcome to my small studio, which I will uh, like to just to walk around and show you a little bit how we work, what we're working with. But of course, it's not, it's deeping into a kind of a process of everything. I'm sitting on a bench. I'm very interested in how benches are working, how benches are uh, accepted in the public space. How do you use a bench in generally? Where do you place them? Uh, and generally, see my work, Go over here and just see my work on a as a tool for communication and dialogue. And here you can see a little bit like a corona bench with a distance to it, but it's of course not, it's made for some years ago. But you can sit on both sides, you can be able to talk to each other and be alone here, and then you can talk to the person next to you. It's very interesting to see how people interfere with each other when they're meeting each other on a bench. Of course, the round one, you slide down and sitting very close. I go over here. To another bench, uh, which is a little bit bigger. And uh, yeah, you see here there's a looping again. The idea is that it's going down in the ground and then somewhere it's coming up again. So it's a way of kind of dealing with uh, connecting things, connecting areas, surroundings, public spaces in a way. But again, trying to do uh, like a fence, but also an artwork, a little bit playful because a playful can bring you to leave your comfort zone. And when you leave your comfort zone, I believe that then you start to live your life. And this is kind of a dangerous zone, of course. I think the last couple of months, the year we have had a lot of challenging, actually looking ourselves in the mirror and finding out who am I? Then we're producing a, a lot of different objects. One is the balloon, which is a balloon hanging in the ceiling. Uh, there's no helium in, and I will just bring one down. It's actually attached to the magnet and it's hanging like that. And then you have a line here. And if you pull the line, you just put the nut on and off. So you can see the pulling it. It's kind of a secret, but now I did it. So you put it on with the magnet. So this is, they are hanging in the ceiling like an object and somehow showing the way of a wonder, the way of a wish, reflecting the surrounding. So this, in this terms, it's somehow reflecting the surrounding you are in and you as well. So let's, 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 um, to a little bit more around. This is the workshop. There's, of course, they have different uh, bureaus and offices and uh, accounting and stuff like that, but that's not so interesting today to look at. Uh, also. So here, this is another, another space. In there, we have some of the engineering people that are doing all the works. But if we look here on a small piece I'd like to show you, it's, um, it's a big box of a mirror. Then Stefan now is coming into the mirror as well because it's a mirror reflecting the surroundings. But here you have a small flame. But if you look very closely, you appear much more flame. So actually appears like 108 flames in, in this kind of mirror. It is a small, really flame with a, small, a lot of small mirrors that appears then it's opening up for you. So when you look from the side, you only see one flame. This is a small object and things we're trying to work on. My show with Nikolai Vallen as well is also the light in me, see the light in you, more or less. And the exhibition is, is a lot about what, which kind of light which kind of empathy do you show to give to other people in right here, right now? Because I believe that art is a language which is not spoken, but it's a language which we can come into, collaborate, but it's a language which 
is showing you can show your feelings and you can understand it without your brain. You can actually understand it with the body. So recently, I almost opened a project in Denmark connecting the train station, uh, the bus station, train station to the Museum Argen, modern art in, in Denmark. And I did these very big light poles, which actually you are allowed to crawl up in if you can, and, and somehow uh, and somehow play and have fun with the object. And they're playing like they're like 30 of those. So they start at the station and you can follow the light pole in different shapes. And you're going and, and it's showing somehow the way to the museum. Another light box, which is standing, you are perfect just the way you are, is again a question about who are you, who are we, and how do you look at, and do you find your love to yourself, and how can you give that to someone else? So again, a, a reflecting surface, which is you looking yourself, see yourself, and there's a kind of a statement and, and, and you bring it into yourself. Sometimes people think it can be very, very direct and very open. But um, if you start to really reflect on if you are feeling that you are perfect to yourself, I think it's a very, very, very important question at the moment. In here we have uh, today, of course, it's six o'clock. So we have not so many people right now. We're preparing this architect uh, doing the commissions. We're preparing down there. I'm just standing there, one of the main architects and, and production persons, and she's creating a, a model now. Maybe we can go closer, Arya. We just yeah. sit behind it, and uh, and you can. But I can just. So here we have a we have a square. We're creating uh, at the moment a fountain for the square, and we're creating uh, for the presentation on Friday. And we're creating a, a playing ground actually with with uh, with with objects. And one we print it out. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a small bench with a loop on, and we're printing also a light pole, which is will be able to crawl up on. So this is something we're combining right now. Then, um, if you look through the window here, that's the kitchen. I've been painting on the walls, the smiley, because the smile is something which is very important. It's for free. You give it to someone without thinking about it, and you can actually make someone very, very happy without thinking about it. So I did the smiling. If you look in here, we have the kitchen, we have the cook serving and cooking food every day, organic vegetarian food for, for the staff and the people. And on the, and on, on the other side of my studio, actually what happened here in, in the last years, I find out I have to rechange and look at things. And I had actually my own room. So I moved out of my room because a colleague and very good friend of mine, Jesper Just. This is a very good film artist, uh, movie artist. He, he then moved in. I wanted to introduce him, but he, he left the building. So he's not there. So before, uh, there was just a very sneak preview of some of my work. Before I start to jump into the big talk, I like to just to briefly found the ground because I'm a little nervous, I was, and very looking forward to this way of introducing myself. But I like to just to, to bring you down for one second, if you want to join me a little bit on a breathing exercise just to be ready for looking at what we are doing and being more aware and bringing your attention into your own body instead of looking at the screen as you do right now. So this is a kind of a breathe. Our life starts with an inhale, it ends with an exhale. And in between those, we have different life and different lengths. But one thing is having in common, which are connecting us, it's our breath. We're breathing the same air around the world. And that's why I like to connect and maybe you can follow, I will uh, instruct to do an inhale. And on exhale, I will do a line, and this I will talk about later, but I think we should just do it just to five. So if you want, close your eyes, be aware of yourself, feel the grounding, and try to follow my one minute meditation breathing workshop. We inhale through our nose, all the way down to our diaphragm, to our stomach, inhaling, and slowly we are exhaling. Inhaling, and smile maybe, and exhaling. Inhaling, and exhaling. Inhaling, and exhaling. And not much, a couple of more. 
Inhaling. Very deep. And exhaling. Inhaling. And exhaling. Last one. Inhaling. And exhaling. Then close your eyes one second. Inhaling again. And just feel for a moment, exhaling slowly. How do you feel right now? It's okay depending on how you feel. You can be stressed, you can be happy, be sad. Just accept the feeling to be right here, right now. That's what we are. Breathe with me and see you in a bit. Thank you, Jeve. So you'll just uh, slowly find your way back. And, yeah. Uh, we'll uh, continue. So I'm the most relaxed uh, host ever. So uh, so we are we're ready. Yeah, we will be here in uh, in a short minute. But I'll just um, start outlining what we are going to uh, debate now. It's uh, it's all about art. And it's all about culture. And today it's also about communities and uh, cohesion, you can say. And uh, we have asked, do the many new online events and communities have the same coherence as physical communities and events? And what does it take to save physical communities during and after the pandemic? And can art and culture play a central and crucial role in this? And um, as I mentioned before, we have uh, three fantastic guests. And uh, Harley, I'll start with you. And uh, you have this uh, fantastic uh, picture in the background of, I think, the, the desert ground. Uh, normally, yeah. we normally have a Burning Man. And, and uh, Harley, for those who don't know, what is Burning Man? Well, people think that Burning Man is a city in the desert. This is Black Rock City, and it is in the desert. And what you just saw before was the, the, the playa itself, the ground itself, which is an ancient alkaline lake bed. But Burning Man's a lot more than that. I actually think that Burning Man is um, what people do together. It's, it's an exchange. Uh, we do bring 80,000 people to the middle of nowhere for an entire week where people um, prototype new ideas, where they um, experiment in community, where they make large interactive art pieces in community together. Um, and that's what we're known for. But what people don't realize is that we have over 300 regional contacts around the world, that there are over 150 sanctioned events around the world that are spin-offs from us, um, that we've been the instigator for many important businesses like Google, um, uh, and that uh, we've uh, been also instigators for a lot of festivals. Um, so we've had a global impact. Uh, we also do a lot of work around the world with um, uh, 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 sustainability, teaching people how to um, uh, use different materials to you know, make their refugee camp a place that's inhabitable and desirable to be at, to be in, um, dealing with um, a lot of emergency response to natural disasters. So we've spun off into many, many, many different things, but it's all in the spirit of community. And it was a lot like what Jeff was just, Jeff was just talking about. What we really do is we, um, we take people out of their comfort zone and, and we push them to their edge. And we do that by creating a, maybe an extreme, but a safe space without where you can get shed your inhibitions. And then we give them meaningful work to do, like working in community to make a major piece of art that is only going to exist for one week and then is going to burn and you'll never have it again. That the experience of doing meaningful work, not work for money, not work for um, to get something done, but something that matters, that fills your heart with joy and makes you feel like you're doing something important. Um, combine that with um, uh, ritual and ceremony. Um, a place, you know, 80,000 people gathering to watch the man burn together. Or maybe it's just you and your best friend who do something annually every year, whatever it is. All those things together make this rich experience that I call Burning Man. Oh, that was, uh, that was really, uh, really something, uh, Harley. Uh, and I think that 
to me, it's a, I, I've always been looking at the kind of the place in the desert, and uh, and that being kind of this intense week where people gather, but that it has spread to uh, to all over the world um, is is amazing. So we'll get back to that. Uh, but but could you say a little bit about what? It's a difficult situation for, you can say, live festivals and gatherings um, at the moment. What what happens when when you suddenly have to go online? Well, um, there's a lot of learning. <laughs> there's a lot of experimenting and a lot of learning. And and luckily, we're we're really good at that. Burning no. Man has always been a, a tentative thing. Is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Is it going to rain out there? In which case it'll destroy everything. Um, so we're used to being in, gray, in a gray area. We're used to having to think on our feet and um, make something out of nothing. We're, we're kind of, that's what, actually what we do. So not having Burning Man was yet just another sort of page to turn in our book. Um, we definitely went online. We we didn't. We, we did what we do best. We we are a vessel. We we create an opportunity for others. We asked our community if if we went online, who would like to be involved? And we had a thousand people come forward and say, "I'd like to do something." And out of those, we had about a hundred people put in submissions. And out of those, we picked eight different ways of people being engaged with us. And um and that's and and they hosted these things. And so we just sort of created the space the online space and the community came and made eight different worlds last year. Um, some of them were so successful that we're gonna keep them forever. Like they're just part of who we are now. So we are definitely doing them again this year. But beyond that, we've also had our community um, stand up in so many different ways. We ha now have an art safari where you can go um, on a map, a worldwide map and, and pick a place and see where there's art. And then you can go to that place and actually visually physically see the art around the world. So we're calling it our art safari. Uh, we've also pushed forward initiatives uh, with the Land Art Generator Initiative, which is a worldwide um, uh, initiative. And we're hosting it on our piece of property out at the Fly Ranch, which is very close to where our event in the desert happens. Um, and, and it's safe COVID wise, like people will be um, uh, making huge, um, livable spaces out on our property that are regenerative and that are using um, the wind, the, 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 the water, the, the sun uh, to create these spaces. And so um, we've really pushed that initiative forward. So we're doing things definitely in the virtual world, but we're doing a lot of things in the physical world as well. Yeah, so it's a combination uh, these times. So, so we learn a lot about how to bridge the connect the physical and the, and the digital uh, realms. Thank you, uh, Harley. And I think I, I'll just uh, continue. And Christian, um, I can ask you, just as I asked uh, um, Harley, what is Burning Man? I can ask you, what is Nordic LA? And I can also say that I, when I spend time with you, you always talk about communities. And it's from uh, being on the stage at, at a nephew concert, connecting for an hour to uh, to the audience, or it's the uh, co-creation between uh, the Nordics and uh, LA in terms of music, and and now you also been you also into real estate now, so you you see communities everywhere. Could you say a little bit about uh, Nordic LA and and also just elaborate a bit about what has happened in your world the the, the past year during COVID? Yes, I can, and and thanks for having me here today. Um, First of all, like Harley is saying, Nordic LA is not as impressive as Burning Man, of course, but really inspired by how how you do at Burning Man, how you're thinking. I think it's about creating opportunities. And basically what we do is believing in that we need to continue the dialogue. We want to, want to break down walls and borders. Um, and, and, and Nordic LA is, is, is creating this direct connection between the Nordic countries and, and the US, especially Los Angeles. We work with various creative industries. Um, and the, the reason why we started back in 2017 was basically because I, I, I saw a lot of artists, a lot of creative companies struggling getting to the US and kind of getting started there. So I thought instead of me just trying to help uh, each individual company artist, uh, I want to make this platform and, and, and that's Nordic LA. And basically it's about creating a community about supporting each other, succeeding in that journey, 
but also the other way around helping American creatives to this side of, of the world. So that's basically what we do in Nordic LA. Our main focus is music, but we work more and more with the art and design, architecture and stuff like that as well. So, and, and now, normally you, I know you and you spend, uh, you divide your time between uh, between Denmark and uh, and LA, but but you, you still have had a lot of uh, activities, even though, uh, mm. We haven't been able to travel. Could you just elaborate a bit on that? Mm. Of course, one of the uh, one of my favorite the UN goals is like partnerships, and we are lucky to have good partners like you, Les, and, and Kunsten, of course. Uh, so, so, so when everything closed down, like uh, a bit more than a year ago, I was just like, either we wait and see what's happening, or we keep pushing forward. And I saw more than ever a need for creatives to be connected out there you have to remember that Denmark and the Nordics is a very small region in this world we have to be part of a an international society and 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 so my thought was like okay how do we actually do what we usually do in, in physical events online and one of the things that kind of surprised me was for example we do these songwriting camps where we take the best writers and producers from the Nordics and bring them to, to LA that that just doing that online and curating it, helping people, making them like, or Harley also talked about like feeling safe in that virtual space really worked out because some artists are maybe a little bit more introverted, especially with people that are writing music. So for them to be able to sit in their home studio and still write with some of the best producers and musicians in the US really worked well. So, so I mean, like we try to do things like virtually of course, I cannot wait to come back to LA, back to see you, Harley, hang out, and hopefully also uh, Burning Man, um, uh, also in a more physical form. But 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 I think actually we we definitely learned something from 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 this, and we'll also continue to have these more online activities because that that works out pretty well in in, in many occasions. Thanks, Christian, and. Uh... Uh, there's so many interesting things coming up here, and just before we go into kind of a joint discussion, Jebe, we've seen your uh, we've seen your studio, and we we took we took uh, our breaths with you. <laughs> A little bit, yeah. Yeah, and you have them uh, behind you now. Yeah. Could you just Jebe just tell us a little bit about what is the Breathe with Me project actually all about? Yeah, it me. yeah, yeah. It started 10 years, 10, 11 years ago where I completely run out of energy, like a, a modern word like burnout, uh, not burning man, but burning, burning yippe. But I think, um, and uh, the word is very beautiful because you are burned out. You are really, you don't have any energy in your mind and your body anymore. And, uh, and I, it, it started with a fear attack and it came on and I have to stop exactly what I was doing uh, and stop traveling, stop doing everything in my life, actually pull the plug. Um, and a lot of things started to happen, of course. I need to look at my life again. And uh, I, was, I, I was having a, a lot of anxious attacks and fear and, and pain and so on. But I start to, uh, one of the good things at that moment, I start to went into the nature. I start to be aware of small things, I, a lot of therapy, of course, but, but I start to do yoga and meditation, uh, but I also start to paint again. And I start to do these small watercolors. Um, and first I, I wrote things, sorry, I'm brain dead. I will be back, take a number or whatever. I, I try to make, because maybe I'm not funny, but I'm trying to make kind of a, a Danish humor about the situation and, and, and use that as survival instinct. I think that's maybe also my structure. And it became also, I started to do these very small lines of breathing. I have, I have here one because I had a workshop earlier today with a lot of people. So I started somehow to do a small line of, 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 of paint, breathing in, when I did a line of breathing out. I did it all, now I'm doing it differently. But I start to start to try to do a lot of those lines because I felt physically that I start to feel calm. And the calmness is of course, because your heartbeat starts to slow down because you focus on your line your mind starts to clear out. So I start to find out that this was a very nice workshop for me to do. Um, and it took a year or two, or two before I actually, I started to do it on some bigger shows where I did it on the walls and the museums trying to create kind of a, 
a pattern of my breath and having other works around like you're seeing today. And then one day I said, uh, I found out, why don't I give it to, and I have a very small pencil, but why don't I give it to, uh, to the pencil to, to the audience? So in a show at Chateau Lacoste in France I, I, and, and, and uh, in Denmark, a museum uh, up in North in Limby, I, uh, I started to give the pencil to the people and they start to paint on the wall, on the museum's wall. And what happened was that it, it became very beautiful. People were doing a line and looked at me and it was like, I never felt and, and experienced my breath like that before because you experience something in a way which is invisible and you make it visible. So, so, so at that time, and then people that created kind of the space around all the other works. Then I started to bring it out to different institutions and so on. And then I got asked, by Art2030, Louise Fawasco with the nonprofit organization trying to use art as a, a way of communicating the, seven, the 17 global goals, the SEGs, in a way, instead of it's all up here and we don't understand how to do them, then bring it down to a way like, like we all now do, I think, also to, to feel them, to use them, to work with them. Um, and then in this collaboration, we started to do, where can we do it in America? We found out New York would be a fantastic platform. The lungs in New York is the Central Park. So we start to work on that, asking the Metropolitan of Modern Art to work with us. And they said, yes. And then certainly we just got, because Louise Fawasco from Art 2030 has a very good context to the United Nations. They asked if I wanted to have the most prominent uh, uh, place in the foyer to do it at the Klima Summit. So of course I was dancing month, a month because I was very happy, but also then, then all the problems started and to find out the finance, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, we did it in the 19 uh, with uh, just three, four months before the COVID started. I mean, officially I would say, and, and we started to, to have this very big canvas. And I, maybe I just show you a couple of things what's going on. Uh, but we, we were, of course, invited, so I have to screen share here. Oh, sorry, I'm not so good at this one here. Uh, is that the one? Yeah, it's, uh, that's the New York. Uh... Yeah, New York. So this is like, I just go through, because we just made it finish today. So I'm just jumping to this one. So this is somehow where we started in New York and then we started, we made an education manual which has been touring around the world and a lot of schools, a lot of institutions, a lot of cities has been taking that. And, uh, and, and I was just show you a couple of those, uh, what's going on. Um, so this is, this is what's New York, United Nations, some of the people uh, which we were breathing with. Of course, I was asking everyone coming through the door with uh, Frau Merkel and, uh, uh, Everyone I saw, and we had amazing people, but they were not always everyone who wanted it, but Michael Bloomberg, Amina Mohammed, uh, Macron, there was a lot of very beautiful, but there was also a lot of young climate activists, a lot of beautiful people who made their statement to be part of something bigger, to be part, I'm always saying, our lives start with an inhale, as I said before, and end with an exhale, but we are connected. So to connect that, of course, for the climate summit, it was a lot about climate, which kind of air do we breathe in? How do we behave? How do we do our life? Um, but then, of course, there are also to do with community, uh, a lot of other things. Here's another more photos of, of beautiful, awesome Danish people, Danish ministers and so on. And there was people from the Amazon who's never been in New York before. And they were standing there doing these lines of breathing. I got very touched about it. Two days after, at this, uh, at, uh, in Central Park, after Christo, the biggest installation uh, has been in the Central Park, seven or six very big waves. Uh, 3,000 people of coming there, uh, working with Metropolitan of the Education Program. Uh, so here we have Max Holler and a lot of people just coming by and breathing. We have 1,000 kids who came for their schools. Two thirds of them have never been in Central Park before, although they're living in New York because they don't feel that they were invited or feel like going there in this upper class situation. So they, they came as a class and then we were, I was talking with them. We were screaming together. We made this kind of lion scream like three times, like Wah! trying to get everything out of our body and getting these nervous things out. And then after three times, they were really like, they were, they were very happy. Then they were not so nervous because the kids were very nervous. Then after that, my friend Jonas was playing a song, Breathe With Me. It's a very beautiful song he wrote. And all the kids was standing. And of course there was a lot of hip hop, Joe. There was a lot of, so it was very beautiful to see how people get into that. And afterwards, I talked with the kids 
almost every group about fear in life because breath is something which you can use to be part of helping you on being afraid of something in life. Um, then, of course, we went further after, after uh, the project. We, we opened up in a way and we started this manual to send out to everyone. And then the COVID came, which, of course, was a shock for everyone and also me. So what could I do with this project online? I never did that online, but I started to paint my room at home. So I started on one side and every Wednesday at seven, and I'm still doing it, Berlin time. I'm online talking a little bit about the situation, how I feel about pain, about suffering, about happiness, about kids, about whatever, just the five minutes. I mean, sometimes it's not so interesting. And then I guide people like I just did now, uh, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. And of course I made it first. So I painted all my room around. I'm not home now, I'm in my studio. And then I just, uh, and now I actually, I should start to pretend to go around and around again, but I didn't do that. I just painted one round. But that was the thing I did. Then there was different projects like C40 in Copenhagen, where a lot of kids was doing it. Um, there was in Switzerland going on. I'm just showing some of the some of the project. Oh, uh, sorry. What do you see now? You see uh, Abeltoft. Abeltoft, yeah. Then Abeltoft. I was not even there. I couldn't come. But I mean, look, they did this amazing place where they tried to connect the water with the city culture center, and they came these so many people to breathe. Um, in Beijing recently with, with the Danish embassy and a, a different culture aspect of trying to bring in awareness in China about things. Then again, another Danish sense of communication and so on and so on. So, so it's, it's like, it's a project which is ongoing and, and, and it's just for free in a way we can breathe. Recently, last week, it was uh, Alba Alto uh, High School in Los Angeles which took it over and there were like 800 students and people who breathing and trying to show their breath. I think they had a lot of problems also with uh, the situation uh, right now. So they just feel so connected again, although they were not really together. And I think this is what art can do. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just going around here. This is what art can do in a way. It, it can communicate, it can connect, although you're not there. And I think this is what makes it as also when you talk about Burning Man being online around the world, how beautiful is that then? That you're trying to use new tools of trying to create the same feeling because I think that art is a time, is a language of time without being spoken. So, I mean, I'm not pushing myself on, on the shoulder, but I'm doing a big Breathe With Me project like three months before the whole world collapsed with about breath in a way, I mean, it's dangerous to breathe. And I think this happening quite oft that the artists somehow uh, in, in any way and also musicians like in all kind of culture that artists are, are much further going into a discussion and going into uh, uh, deal with situations with because I think that now I'm going to, into the spiritual part. I think that we are that we are all connected with our awareness and I, I believe that we can open up for that and tap like a cloud of awareness and creativity. And that's why I think I, I can sit and meditate with what I'm doing, but the idea is not coming there, idea coming afterwards when you're actually just feeling it. Yeah, so, so um, breathe with me. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. amazing. No, no, it's a really, uh, yeah, but I, I remember talking to you, uh, I think actually last year in, uh, in April or May, where I asked you, could you uh, participate in, in this talk? And now we are a year later, and, and we were discussing that you that this project were coming up actually. So, so it's really, uh, really interesting. But I, I could pose a question saying that actually some of the things we see in this project, it, it's in, in a sense, it's very physical, that, that, it's, that it's connected to to, we can kind of feel being there or Burning Man where, where you build up things or you are at a concert. And, and normally you shouldn't use your own kids in a talk like this, but I have a daughter and she is 16 years old and she's been uh, online schooling for five months in a row. So you can say, these, how do we... How do we get these... Uh, what, you should, what I'm trying to say, yeah, but you what is actually 
what people like is that they are, they are doing something physically mm. and they go out and they partake in this. So what, if you could say, the communities we are creating now, do they have the same cohesion as, as ones we knew before? Uh, if, if, yeah, I, I, it's different. Of course, it's very different because I mean, I'm a hugger, you know, I love to hug and touch people and, uh, you know, and I miss it like crazy. Yeah. Uh, so wait a moment when we see each other next time, I will hug you like crazy because I have the first uh, thing next week. Yeah. But, uh, but, uh, but, but actually I think what's happening and I think also the two other uh, beautiful guests will, uh, will add something on that. But I think actually we learn so much about being present on this screen and it costs a lot of energy i think to sit here and talk because i like to be present for for you and for the rest of the people but we learn that and we also learn to accept that we also learn to sit here and and to take that in because I, so what i found out that when people have been doing their drawing which maybe doesn't look like this but it's different colors and looking like that or maybe they did other doodles on top they're posting it, sending it to me, and I'm reposting it. So it's somehow getting this kind of reflection of us looking at other people's press and other people's creative dialogues. And I think this is what we, we learn now, is that we, we learn to activate other creative processes, I think, which before COVID was not really like, oh, you don't touch that, you don't do a lecture, you don't do a presentation on a very big scale work on a new music I'm thinking, online. Oh my God, how can you do that? But now you see my, everyone is playing live every Friday on Danish radio or whatever we're doing, but it's just nice. I mean, because we need it, of yeah, course. But, I, but if, if I, Harley, what, what I've really been thinking about, about your, your first statement is that, that it's amazing that, that this widespread network around the world that, that kind of started uh, at a single place in a desert far from everything and and when I listen to what you're saying it's actually because they're doing things in smaller communities a lot of places and that's again being kind of physically together but then the virtual realm somehow connects us but could, could you say what, what is it that well what I found fascinating is um is that yes, people stayed connected and are staying connected now through uh, technology for sure. Um, and it's different. It's not the same. It's different. Mm -hmm. Like that, that hug, nobody, we can't replace that hug. That physical hug is, is, is irreplaceable, but we're learning to flex different muscles. We're learning we have different muscles. We're learning to enjoy things in a different way. We're creating sort of like growing a new brain alongside this physical brain, this one that, that can that can take the technology and use it in a way that's that's also satisfying. Um, the most wonderful thing that I've seen that's come out of this strange page that we've had to, to start to draw on is that um, people that would never come to Burning Man, that would never participate in their regional event in their own country, came to um, our, uh, our virtual Burning Mans. And I met somebody the other day who's now volunteering for us who is so passionate he listens to our radio station 24 7. he is like totally just took the deep dive is now what we call a burner and he's never been to burning man the only one he's ever been to was the virtual one last year and that's somebody we would have would have never touched we would have never connected with that person so i've met a whole bunch of people that found it easier to go to the virtual burning man than to go to any of the physical ones that we have around the world and that's beautiful like that's just i totally unexpected so do you, do you have any, do we just say that now you have kind of really strong online digital communities that connects to kind of something that started physically or do you try to kind of have strategies to turn it into that, that people will start to attend physically or should we just accept saying that that it's a new situation so let's uh, let something just stay online or personally i feel like it's it's too soon to tell yeah. we're still in it we're still in the yeah. creation phase we don't know what the outcomes are yet i mean i think maybe after a year we're starting to see some things that we could grow the way burning man has happened is that we have we did something people responded in a positive way went oh that worked 
let's see what happens. And we just let it grow. We don't, we're not trying to put, put some place, trying to say, here you are and you need to get over here. We're, mm -hmm. we're saying, oh, this is important. This is meaningful. Well, let's see where it takes us and let's clear the pathway so that you can keep, continue to go there. Let's, 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 let's build on what's already happened. So I think we're in a building phase right now where with time we'll see what's important and what isn't. Maybe it'll lead to people going to physical things or maybe some people will always just want to stay virtual. I don't know. I think it's too soon to tell. Yeah. Christian, what is your, what, what is your experience of, uh, the, of that? Because, because I know when, mm -hmm. when you're a rock star, it, it's like you, 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 uh, you have an audience. Uh, it's really... Uh, Hopefully, otherwise you're not a rock star, I guess. Yeah, so. yeah but, but you have an audience. <laughs> yes. No, but, but let's like, I think facts are right now that we see more loneliness than before COVID. It is, it, it's, it's not a good thing. It's bad, you know, COVID is bad. When that said, um, of course, this is giving, I think it has speed up the process about becoming more digital in many ways. When that said, you cannot substitute the physical aspect with the digital aspect. But if we learn to combine, to use the tools that we develop faster or somebody developed faster during the COVID situation, I think this more hybrid setup where like Harley says, maybe you don't want to go to Burning Man because I've been and you get dust in your eyes and you know, it's super hot and it's super cold and, and maybe you want to be part of the community. But if you can do that and connect in a digital way, I think it's, it, it's a great thing. When that said, we are still in a situation where more people are facing like uh, mental uh, issues and, 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 and physical issues and so on. So we need to be aware of like to maintain the communities that are so important to us that, that we have to you know, pick up the people that may, might not really connect the digital, digitally uh, or, or I really miss the, the physical thing. Like, like you know, here in Denmark, today, most of the music festivals, for example, were canceled. Um, and that is, that is a bummer, you know, that's super, super sad. And, and we have to be aware of, what can we do instead? How can we fill that hole somehow? And we cannot only say to people, you know, go online. We need to, we need to have this hybrid where you you have both elements in people's life. But the digital side is something that that's an extra thing we can add to the whole process of creating and designing these these uh, amazing, wonderful communities. Yeah, um, and then you, yeah, you your project is like a it, it's really. It's amazing because it's really a solo project about to you 10, 11 years ago. And then it turns into uh, into kind of a more, some kind of a community. Would you say that? Yeah, I, I think it, it um, now is not a one stand anymore, but it, of course at that, at that time I was feeling very alone <laughs> to breathe <laughs> and trying to find out my way in life. Uh, which were a little bit early. I was like 35 at that time. Lucky me, I'm not getting 45 and doing that. But I'm still on it anyway. But but uh, but I think that, that, that it, it, it. I hope that it is a community because I mean, if a small if a small village in Africa starting to breathe and, and do stripes in the sand because they want to be a part of it, if they're collecting things with what plastic and stuff and putting up on a plunk and saying this is. I mean, also. So it's not only about breathing, it's all about environment. It's all about, it's, it's, there's so much things in it with, with the teachers when they take it, they feel so responsibility. And this is what we need, I think in the future is these, 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 these burning souls who, who live and want to, to do a change and to give something to people. And this is what, what I think also what happened in, in many of these projects is, is and, and a lot of projects, it is that people take their responsibility to, to do things and to bring it out to someone. This was this here in, in, in Abu Alto uh, uh, last week, it was a, a woman uh, called Svetlana who, who, who uh, was a mother with two kids in the school. And, and she knew there was people suffering in the school also uh, very negative feelings because I mean, as a young people, a young, young high school uh, person sitting at home for one year, of course you, you I mean, if you're alone and don't have any sisters and so on, you freak out. I'm sure you have a lot of 
emotional uh, situation. So, so certainly to feel that say, I need to do this project. And she, she, she gave, she had struggled to, to allow to do it because the situation from the city and so on, but the mayor came and talked and very beautiful in the end and, and it just succeeded. And, and, and we were not allowed to post anything before after the project because they were afraid that, that someone should come and stop it. But it just, and, it, and, and this responsibility uh, or small community centered wall making blue stripes on the opening on the walls to have it permanently. All these small, it, it's the most beautiful stories. And, 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 and uh, I think this is what brings something very important also like Burning Man or like music is when you can give a tool and then it starts to work itself like communities and then start to build different communities. And maybe they get other ideas they do start to paint on the floor only, or they do start to do circles and waves. You can do, you can, you can connect your breast to everything. But as long as they are aware of what they're doing, they can develop it as they want. And I think this is what also I like to hear more about Christian's work because how do you develop these communities? Because how do you do it now? Because I think writing and getting people, I mean, also very talented people into with people like you and very professional, it must be like a mind-blowing setting, huh? for people mm. because they're mm. sitting there with some very beautiful people. And that's mm. just energy. And this is what we need because I remember once, sorry, I'm talking, I'm stopping now. Once they caught a lot of culture support in Denmark, they're doing that every time a certain amount of, of, of the government is coming to, to the politic. But, <clears throat> and this is where, where it's getting very difficult because all this, the spirne, or the, all these small things, all these, uh, all these new things, all these people, I actually starting to do and I think actually COVID had helped, although I've been very difficult for young artists, I think actually had helped to start to think very creative, and very different to play outside for people or whatever they do, but it's just, I think it, it, it's not bad what happened. Yeah. It's a difficult situation. I think like what your amazing project you have, uh, Breathe With Me and Burning Man ha have in common is also that Art is, in my opinion, a very strong driver for community because to create a community, uh, you have to meet around something, especially if you want to create a community that's broader than just people that are totally like-minded. And I think the whole like uh, task about actually making people come together uh, to secure like diversity and so on, I do believe that art is and can be a very strong tool for that because when you experience art, like like your art piece, uh, Jeppe, or I've been looking to going to Burning Man, seeing some of the art pieces there, it's not necessary about politics or different opinions. It's it's a neutral ground. It's it's just an experience. It's like what you did today, Jeppe, with your exercise is kind of you reset the system, and then we can start to talk or do or something together. So I see like both what 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 you're doing is really. Uh, finding this kind of common ground where we, at least we can meet there and then we can disagree and so on. But, but, but we all have to breathe. We all have to be inspired to live. We all need a reason. And, and, and that's where art is, 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 is a strong driver and will be a strong driver also in kind of rebuilding some of the communities that we might have lost uh, during the COVID situation. Would you say now, now yeah, you were touching upon that that there's been something growing from beneath because there was when you have a in a certain urgency of things, then then you start to invent new ways of uh, you can say to some extent uh, almost surviving, uh, finding new ways around things and and it's also what I hear from you, uh, Harley. But in and and we have two very different situations between. Denmark, also uh, Berlin, which is kind of welfare states, and you have a uh, United States where where kind of government interference is not that strong, but are we societies, do we support this way of thinking enough? Uh, in, in Denmark, when we reopen society, it's not like uh, we open up to, uh, to art or the cultural scene as the first thing, it's more saying, now we need to shop. Uh, and and so, so do, we, do we create Kind of the overall society that supports the things we are talking about now, or or is it a thing that should not be supported by kind of governments and uh, these kind of things? Is it something that has to grow from beneath? 
I think that's one of the benefits. I mean, if there if there is a silver lining, I think that's one of the silver linings, is that um, people couldn't go out and shop, and so that whole way of that that we've been trained like to be, like that's what you do, right? Like that had to be thrown out the window. And of course, Burning Man at Burning Man, you don't need money. Like you're supposed to bring everything you need to survive, and um, we don't exchange money at all. So we've been an experiment for the last 33 years. In, in, in saying no to that consumer lifestyle. But now the whole planet's been forced to go there. And I think people have an opportunity to reset themselves in a meaningful way. And that's one of the very important silver linings. I, I hope that when we come back, that people will better, they better understood, understand what they value and where they wanna put their time. And, and that this break will give them an opportunity to understand that for themselves and they'll come back to something different that isn't just about keeping our economies going so that the government can do what the government does so that we can all fall in line and, and go back to like it was. I, I hope that it's different. Yeah, you, you, no, no, I'm just giving a thumb up. I'm, I'm so agreeing about uh, we have, as I said before, uh, we, we had so much the mirror in front of us, our nose, and we need to change. And, and, and this kind of government saying, now you can go shopping again. I mean, we don't want to go out shopping, goddamn. We just, I mean, we, we don't want to be using our clothes that we've been using one year and I'm, I'm having old shoes on. And it's okay to look like that. Um, and we rethink, start to try to create new things and color our clothes at home and whatever we do. I mean, and this is the way we have to change. And I mean, uh, and, and how, what we buy and what we, what we eat and, and, and we have to think everything through again, because the one, the thing we learned from our parents and so on, that doesn't work. So we need to create new tools and new communities who has focused differently. And I don't think we have the tool yet we need to create the tools. And that's why I think the young generation, younger than us, is so important to look at because they're in between. They're much wiser. They have a much more sensitive way of doing things where we we are still in the lag of our parents stumbling on. We, still, we have still been doing a lot of shit in our life and doing, look, I mean, if you think about what you're doing every day, how much you're fucking up the world every day, how you use water, how you use electricity, which kind of things you do, I mean, if you do a list every day, you feel bad every time you go to bed because we are doing stuff every day harming this world. But but how can we, of course, come to a place? And I think then the younger people, not only create the Thunberg, but everything is like that, is just asking and pushing us to do things. Question, uh, any, or Harley, did you have any? Uh... I have another thought. So. Yeah. Christian, you go respond. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, actually, Harley, I would like to hear from you, and maybe that's part of what we're going to talk about. But one thing is the whole digital setup, of course, the online part. But, but for Burning Man, like you said, you've been actually showing an example of a society without money exchange, like some of the bad habits, try to keep them out and, and, and just be there. Could you, I'm, as far as I know, it's really hard to get a ticket to Burning Man and so on. Could you expand that? Would there be a bigger need in the future? As far as I know, more people are, are, are searching, you know, for, uh, trying to get into Burning Man that, that you have space for. What, what can the world learn from that? It seems like the need is bigger than what, what you can fulfill so far. Uh, what, what can we do to support that movement? Well, that's a great question. <laughs> um, I mean, I the regional growth is is uh, is really where it's at. I mean, what we do out there in the desert um, is replicable, and, and people can do it anywhere. Right? We already talked about it. Um, yep, it was just talked about it right off the top. Not not, not even we've never met before, right? And mm. creating that safe space, allowing people to push beyond their comfort zone. Um, giving them really important work to do that's not about money at all. In fact, it's the sort of the antithesis. And then memorializing it by giving them an opportunity with ritual and ceremony to understand how one individual fits into the greater whole, that sort of sense of belonging. You can do that anywhere, right? So mm -hmm. I think that we're finding different ways to do that. Um, and the, the thing I wanted to bring up is another amazing thing that's happened with technology at this particular 
time is that um, this we're, we're, we've taken it from like the virtual the virtual world right virtual reality that was just something that you gave if you were a gamer you did like I would never do that I wouldn't want to put on a headset like I want to be here now present I want that physical hug I want to be in the moment physically right but what we found is that with with the virtual worlds now we've pushed it out of just the gaming niche and it's become a tool that can be used in other ways I want to tell you a quick story um, there is a burner who's been working in Uganda with refugees camps for the last 10 years. Um, he's gotten outside funding and he goes and he takes like plastic bottles and fills them with dirt to make into bricks and teaches the people there to make these bricks. And then they're building spaces, common spaces for people to have humanity, to have, they can get out of their tent and go to a common space and, and go to school or celebrate or play music, you know, like bringing humanity to, the, to these refugee camps. Well, that guy went and took um, these these people who've been building the bricks these refugees and gave them a headset and took them to virtual burning man and in virtual burning man they would tap somebody in the shoulder and say hey you want to come and see our, our refugee camp they built a virtual refugee camp and would take people from the virtual burning man to the virtual refugee camp so they could uh, average burner could experience what it's like for them in their refugee camp like that is that's breaking barriers that's not just about gaming and that's not just about um, even just finding that satisfaction in, 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 as a human who, who's troubled in these difficult times, it's actually a teaching opportunity and a sharing opportunity that's profound. And I think that we can capitalize on that. Those are the kinds of learnings I think we'll be able to capitalize as we move on as we move forward. Mm. Okay, that I, I would say because I'm the host and this was a fantastic uh, kind of uh, closing uh, story. And I actually, I have a, because uh, the audience uh, can also post question. And, and I had one from uh, uh, a girl in Barcelona asking you, uh, uh, Harley, that how community building works and how you create an afterlife. And you just asked that question with, with that story saying that, that when you build these communities, and, and I think it's really about for, to me, what is the important learning of this is that we as artists and cultural institutions and big events, we, we, we need to have this openness about kind of saying that we, we, we need to be much better in combining the virtual and the physical. Yeah. So I think that it's, that, that, that it's this kind of, kind of the beauty and the hawks that, uh, that the ever misses out on, but, but also the opportunities that now I can easily invite you, Harley, to sit here and have a talk. And we have guests from Barcelona and we have uh, people watching in from, uh, from Denmark and Jeb is connected from Berlin. And, and, and we have this. So, so in that sense, we also build things. So I would just say to the three of you that it's been really uh, a fantastic talk. And uh, Jeb, uh, what a nice tour and a small workshop with you. And then I have to... Uh, thank uh, the people that support uh, this project. It's the uh, Spanoa Foundation and it's the region of North Jutland. And then we have uh, two new foundations uh, called the Agostinus Foundation and, and Louis Hansen Foundation. And without these, uh, um, these foundations, we couldn't do things that we do now. And there's been a, a, a wide awareness for the past year that that support for these kind of things from private uh, foundations in Denmark has been really, really important. So, so I would like to thank that. And, and I have to join the virtual Burning Man and I have to, uh, to go there together with Christian. And Jebe, I think that Breathe With Me project would be really uh, something to bring to, uh, to the desert. I thought about it, make a, a circle around, but yeah, yeah. be too long. <laughs> uh, I think we have a, some kind of a date going on here. <laughs> I'm signing up as a volunteer. Yeah, okay. so, so we, we would all come in blue. And and, and then, uh, so, and yeah, you are also, uh, you, are going, you are part of the, a big show at the Kunst in uh, the museum later this year. And I'm also really happy because we reopened um, on the 21st of April. So people are back and, uh, and we can feel that it's, um, that we can feel the audience and, and we, so people are physical at the museum, but we also have these kind of events. So we try to connect and Christian, 
this was the sixth uh, Danish Global Talks uh, together with you. So thank you as well. Uh, and we'll, we'll continue. So thanks for listening in, uh, all of you out there. And thanks to the three of you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. It was a pleasure. Take, take care. Hope to talk to you soon. <laughs> yeah, <me too. laughs>